privilege for us to be joined today by Dr. Catherine Day. Dr. Day has had a long and distinguished career in the European institutions, most notably as former Secretary General of the European Commission. You're currently Chair of the Irish Government's Citizens' Assembly on Gender Equality. Dr. Day, we're really delighted you're here with us and we're looking forward to hearing your views on the future of Europe. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to have the opportunity. Thank you. So I might just start. Uh, today is a particularly pertinent day. The European Council is sitting. The new EU leaders and institutions are all in office. And typically the relationship between all these different actors has been a mix of collaboration and conflict. Do you think the institutions will be able to find consensus to deliver on the, the ambitious objectives set out in the European Union strategic agenda? I think that the new leaders of the different institutions are coming into office wanting to get on and to work together because I think they realise the enormity of the challenges that Europe faces. I think Brexit also underlines to everybody across the EU the value of the EU, what it means to be part of the EU, and so I think that will give a bit of an impetus to defining a new agenda for the European Union. And the people who are currently taking up um, important roles of responsibility um, come into institutions that are already up and running. The Commission has been there since the beginning. The Parliament has got um, more powers now than it ever had. And even the Office of President of the European Council um, is now on its third president. So there are um, ways of communicating, ways of working together. Having said that, I think the um, makeup of the current European Parliament elected um, before the summer um, is more complicated. And I do think it will be more difficult and take longer to find a majority support for um, the proposals that will come out of the different institutions. I believe we will still have a majority for pro-EU centre ground policies, but it will be a bit slower and more difficult to get there than it was in the past. And just sticking on the theme of the institutional dynamics, one of the proposals of President von der Leyen is the idea of introducing a, an inter-institutional work programme, a, a joint declaration really of legislative priorities. Why would this be such a significant innovation and do you think it has any chance of success? Well, I think it's a very good idea. Um, because I believe if we had a commonly agreed work programme, every part of the EU would be able to explain coherently to our citizens what is the EU going to be doing in the next five years. People don't like surprises. Um, and I think it would be a very good way of explaining what Europe does um, and that Europe is doing things only that can only be done at European level, like climate change, like dealing with migration, like standing up for Euros, Europe's values um, around the world. Um, so I think it's an excellent idea. Um, I think it, uh, there will be a lot of negotiation to decide what goes in and what does not. I would hope that it would be a fairly focused and not too large agenda. The other advantage, I think, would be if everybody signs up at the beginning to these are our priorities, then the Council and the Parliament should make time and give priority to putting those proposals through when the Commission has proposed them. So I think as a communication tool and as a way of streamlining the agenda, it's a very good idea, so I hope that President von der Leyen will succeed. And you touched there on explaining the European Union to citizens. Mm. There's talk of, of holding a conference on the future of Europe, and France and Germany have already thrown their ideas into the ring. What role do you think small states, such as Ireland, should look to play in the planning of this conference and indeed in, in the realisation of it? Um, I think in every country people feel that there's a need to make extra efforts to get the population involved. We see the lesson of Brexit, where people felt alienated from the membership of the EU, and we don't want that to happen anywhere else. Um, so I think there is great merit in having um, citizen involvement, um, uh, and to allow people um, the opportunity to express their views. Um, and to be informed, because the EU is complicated and you can't explain it in a single soundbite. But my own experience is that when you give people information and when you give them enough time to ask questions and to be informed, then you get very interesting answers from them and that should be the basis of the future policy. Um, I think the challenge is that you will get very different answers from different parts of the EU, uh, but the challenge then is to find the common elements and to move forward um, as a union. 
Uh, and I think Ireland um, is well used to these kind of debates and we have strong opinions. Um, so, uh, but I think we need to define what we want the EU to be once the UK has left. Um, because we've never known EU membership without the UK. We joined on the same day. They are now leaving and we are staying. This will change what the EU is. And I think we would really benefit from having a debate about what is, um, what is the kind of EU we want post um, the UK departure. And just on that then, it's a short question, but a very complex one. What niche should Ireland seek to carve for itself in the EU after Brexit? Um, I don't think there's a particular niche. I think we have a lot of interest with uh, some of the bigger countries, a lot of the smaller countries. Um, I think we have a huge interest in keeping Europe open to the outside world. I think Irish people are very touched by the core values of the EU, about individual rights and freedoms that come with responsibility, about um, helping developing countries, about investing um, in the regions. So I think we, we are very broadly in the mainstream of the agenda. Um, what I think we need to do is to look ahead and to see where do we want to uh, further emphasise certain policies um, and where do we think perhaps some things are better left to the member state and to be done nationally rather than at European level. Well, Dr Day, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.